Member of Parliament for the Ningo Prom Prom constituency has hinted he and the NDC will file a suit against government by January 31 over its decision not to implement some of the ML Short Commission recommendations. Speaking at the anniversary of the violence attended by former President Mahama, the MP who was assaulted also said those who suffered injuries will never give up until justice is served. My colleague Komla Kluche is at the venue and he joins us over the line. Hello, Komla. Good afternoon. A very good afternoon to you there, Boel. I mean, uh, it's been exactly one year since uh, that violence clash that occurred at the Ayawaso West Wagon by elections. Uh, some, some number of people got maimed in uh, that violent clash. Subsequently, there was uh, the Emil Short Commission report, or uh, the commission that subsequently sat, and then they did a report within a space of about a month there about. However, the report was submitted to the president. Well, a year on, most of the victims have said they have not received compensation. In fact, a lot of them have been speaking at the one-year anniversary commemoration of uh, the clashes that happened. But I'm joined uh, here to speak on the matter by the national organizer of um, the NDC, Joshua Akamba. One thing has been very clear amongst the talk. Former president John Ramani Mahama, he has said that, well, he condemned the act. He said that under his leadership as the president or the next president of the Republic of Ghana, he will see to the full full implementation of the recommendations of the ML Short Commission. He's also uh, 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 vehemently registered his displeasure at the conduct of the police, most especially in the run-up to this particular event, where a wireless message was, in, uh, uh, was issued that they should not provide security for the event. But I'm joined by Joshua Kamba. Joshua, in the first place, you tell us what is your reaction to the, uh, the wireless message by the police administration. Let me confirm from you, one, did you officially write to the Ghana Police Service for them to provide you security for this event? What we did was that we sent a team led by the Constituency Executive to go to the District Police Command and to accordingly inform them and throw an invitation to them that this, this would be happening. Verbally, but not officially on paper. It was written. I mean, they were invited to the program. And then what we further did was to also make a follow-up. That was just yesterday. If the, the President knows he's not aware, he should do the honorable. Because I believe, if he doesn't do it, I actually believe that Truly, 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 like the president once said that he has a militant group. And this militant group are the ones that are now operating. And for that matter, what happened on that day, on 31st, on the, on the day of the by-election, the president equally, should I also say that he might be in the known of it. Because what happened on that day, he set up a commission. And then gladly and gladly accepted and threw away the recommendation of the commission. There were some, there were some they made sense of, there were some they said no, uh, they disagreed. That is fair, isn't some, it? Some that would have actually deterred his people from misbehaving is what he said, I will not accept it because the president accepts that vigilantism is the best. But that because he can use state sponsorship to do what he did on that day, that is exactly what he did. But let me tell him, the former president said it, we shall resist him. Some of us are ready for, to share blood. Some of us are ready to share so blood. Share blood for what? I, I mean, Yaro, you saw him. On that day, I came here and I saw bones, human bones. I saw human beings bleeding. You understand? People share their blood. People share their blood for the independence of this country. That's not right. And so we shall share our blood to resist the oppressor and to resist this president from misbehaving. Joshua Kamba, uh, one of the things that has been common. Uh, one year after this is the issue of compensation. Uh, the victims are saying that, well, they haven't seen anything. Uh, you are calling on them to exercise restraint. Uh, what sort of help is your party offering them, especially those who have been maimed? I mean, day in, day out, we go to visit them. Day in, day out, I have taken my time to visit some of them. One Yaro was on admission, and then the, the wife had delivered and there was going to be a dory. We went and supported it. I was there with my constituency executives, the national chairman himself, the general secretary. The flag bearer has always been sending. Just now, he just reminded them that he will send another delegation to come. Sometimes he even visit them in the evenings to have discussion with them. But let Nana Akufa don't know that he cannot get away with this. 
from the video I saw, Nanado can be a victim for the International Court of Criminal Justice. For what? For what I saw, the video I saw, do I get, do I get a sense that you as a national organizer or your party wants to go to the ICC over this? I think that when the party wins, I'll go to the ICC with this matter. And I'll drag the former, the former president, Akufadu, to the, to the ICC. I promise you that. Joshua Kamba is the national organizer of uh, the NDC. Well, he says that you're going to go to the ICC over this matter. Well, the matter is not ended yet, but well, what it is is that most of the victims who are here have expressed uh, their appreciation to the leadership of the NDC as well as former president John Mahama for his, his continued support to them. Uh, for most of them who have not been able to even work or earn any uh, form of income, he continues to support them. From the Ayawaso West Wagon constituency, Komla Kluche, TV3 News, Accra. All right, and that's our man, um, Komla Kluche from Ayawaso West Wagon constituency. A year on, we look back at the recommendation that was made by the ML Short Committee on the screen now. Um, some of the recommendations that were made on the structural front, um, the recommendation was to structurally. Uh, well, let's start with the compensation, rather, where um, compensations were actually made for five persons, the likes of Mr. Theophilos um, Seddofu, Seydou Zane, James Moore, Mohammed Al Hassan, and Ishao Yaru. Also, recommendations were made for individual liabilities to persecute some personalities, including Ernest Akumia, aka Double. Um, recommendations on the on the personal front to develop protocols for subsequent deployment of security apparatus. Now, in a few, I'll be speaking to a security analyst to understand this better, but other recommendations that were made also included to revise the national security setup um, and also to, for the, the police to review their recruitment procedures, immediate criminalization of militia organizations in Ghana, as well as for police should also mount public education on crime, especially on crime scene management. Right, so those were some of the recommendations that the Emil Short Commission recommended. I'm in the studio with a security analyst, Richard Kumado, who will share some light on these recommendations. So uh, the law on vigilantism has been passed. Does that mean that we're seeing an end to these incidents? No, I don't think so. Uh, I would have preferred the recommendations as we read them would have been implemented. Even though the commission was not an independent police commission, you can understand why Emil Short and his team were coming from. And to the extent that we are still hearing the voices we played before we came in, right. we still have a long way to go. Mm. Remember the Peace Council has never been able to break a peace between the two parties who are fronting the vigilantism. And just yesterday at our Pike meeting over a crucial issue that determines uh, the political activities in this country for the next few years to come, there were blues. It means that the underlying tone between what happened at Ayawaso West Wagon and what we saw yesterday, or the tape we just played, was vigilantism because it helps them to either win power or maintain power and to that extent we have a long way to go when it comes to this issue. Well a year on the compensation for the persons that were mentioned by the commission hasn't been paid. Do you think we have wasted our time? No, it, it's a government it's recommendation. It's a government who set up the commission and so therefore it's within the preview of the government to reject it outright as they have done or to accept some of the recommendations. We are disappointed many of the things like recommendation 5.1 uh, and 5.8 were not uh, adhered to by government, and that is a worry. They are victims and they are children to be looked after. And uh, it's an eyesore in Ghana for the 21st century, witnessing what we saw last year, 31st January. We still see private security at political events. What does that say about the, you know, the commission's work and lessons that we draw from the incident that happened at the Yawasu West Wagon. Between the two parties, they've never learned any lesson, and they will continue to found their, uh, their full soldiers that have graduated to become vigilantes of Malaysia. And they, they are very treacherous, and their presence in the Ghana community is creating a major threat for national security as well. Right. As we head towards the 2020 election, uh, civil society has to be very alert and be watchful. Otherwise, these guys pose a major threat to national security. Mm. 
we, we are aware of a leaked um, a tape from the police where they're wanting their personnel to stay off, um, you know, the venue, the, the Ayawaso West Wagon constituency as we commemorate a year after the incident. What does this say about our security and preparedness going, preparedness going into elections? The, I think it's an unfortunate situation because we are talking about the uh, independence of the police. Then whatever event took place today is a national event, whether they like it or yes. The police has a mandate to provide security for whatever reason. Right. I don't know the reason why they were prevented from going, mm. but we would have loved an independent police that would be at the right place at the right time. And it is an early days yet. Let's wait and see. But it's unfortunate. I pray there has not been any incident of violence there. If there has been violence and the police are very far from the scene, mm. then become an issue. Absolutely. And we are talking about NDC and NPP. Once you see them fighting over an issue, then it becomes a national issue. And then I think the police should have been there. First time information would have been better for us. All right. So Richard Komodo is a security analyst and he's been helping us to understand um, the lessons that we have drawn from the incident that happened at the Ayawaso West Wagon constituency a year on.